CEO Ronald Hickman from Creating a Difference. I want to talk to you a little bit about the center of gravity, especially when we're talking about mass bias balls and what kind of that means. I got two brand new dynamic swings here from Columbia 300, and there's a little bit of difference between these two bowling balls. So the pin and the mass bias are in the exact same location on both balls, but the center of gravity, the CG marking is different. In this case, it's one inch away or one inch to the left. In this case, it's actually two inches to the left. And that's one of the things that people may start to question. They go, hey, you know, I want to make sure that my center of gravity logo is right in line with the pen and the mass bias. And does it matter if it's moving around? Yes or no? I don't know. Let's go find out. At the end of the day, this is what I'm going to tell you. You're not going to see a whole lot of difference between these two bowling balls because in the past what would happen when you would have the CG in a different location, you'd put a weight hole in the ball. And the weight hole would change the ball reaction, and that would give you a performance difference. With the, rule, with the USB-C rules now, you can't put weight holes in bowling balls no more. So this movement, this movement of the CG doesn't really play a big role. I mean, one inch, maybe two inches at the most uh, total. But you're not going to really be able to see that when you're bowling league. You're not going to be able to see that a lot, uh, especially if you're bowling any sort of house pattern. You know, like I said, one to two inches is not a whole lot of difference. And this happens to be one inch to the left. This happens to be two inches to the left. But instead of us just talking about it, we're actually going to bring in some data. We're going to show you some clutch data, some specto data, and a, a comparison so you can see on the lane exactly how much difference this matters and whether or not you should be concerned about it. Last but not least, both of these balls are two to three inches, as you can see from the boxes. They're both two to three inches on the pin out distance. That's one of the things that people always ask for too. Should I get a two to three inch pin or a three to four inch pin or a five to six inch pin and does that matter? At the end of the day, those things only matter if you can put weight holes in bowling balls. If you can't put the weight holes in the bowling balls, it doesn't really matter from a performance standpoint. One or two inches max, as we're gonna be able to find out here shortly. So, stay tuned for the next part of this video where we're gonna go on the lanes and throw both these bowling balls. CEO, Ron Hickler from Creating the Difference, stay tuned. All right, we are here. We got two bowling balls here. We're gonna give you some information that you may or may not know. Uh, we have two dynamic swings that are drilled the exact same. The only difference is one of the dynamic swings has the center of gravity one inch to the left. And then the other dynamic swing has the center of gravity two inches to the left. So that's one thing that we get asked, do I need to request a special pin out distance? Does it need to be to the left or right? So we're going to go on to the lanes and see what sort of data we get and give you some information on does this really matter? Um, so this test is really to see what are we going to see out of these two bowling balls. So we're throwing the one inch uh, dynamic swing first. Of course, we do have that specto data that allows us to see what the actual shot does while it is going down the lane. So we're going to try to repeat that exact same shot now with the two inch uh, dynamic swing. We're going to refer to them as the one inch and two inch just to make it easy. You can think of the two inch as the longer CG out and then the one inch as the shorter one. So that was a little right. But we are going to see if there's an actual performance difference between the one inch and the two inch dynamic swing. Seeing if that CG position actually matters on that asymmetric bowling ball. So we're going to take that two inch again and see if we can throw it in the same spot as that first shot with the one inch dynamic swing. That was a lot closer to the first shot, shot one on there, comparing shot one and shot three. <clears throat> Still a little bit off on the launch angle. But we'll go ahead and keep throwing more shots to see what sort of data we get. So we're going to go back to the one inch. 
pin there, you can see that the CG is actually closer um, to the line that would intersect the mass bias and the pin. So we're going to change the targets a little bit, change them to four inches wide. That's something special that we can do. Courses of Clutch Bowling, they have partnered with the CTD Education Center, allowing us to do special things like this with the targeting as well as the ball tracer. Um, you may have seen in some of our other videos that we can actually put overlays on the lane itself. You can kind of see it on lane one there, um, the overlays that we can do. That one is specifically the Clutch Bowling logos as well as the Creating the Difference logo. Uh, but we can overlay the entire lane with something like traffic, water. So lots of cool opportunities um, with Clutch Bowling that we can put on the lane. So those are two really good, that was a really good shot. So we're going to see if we can use that line up there. You can see the specto data. See if we can use that line with the to the two inch um, dynamic swing, two inch pin. Yes, we say it's a two inch pin, but it's really two inches left of the pin to mass bias line. So I'm going to try to repeat the shot, see if we can repeat just a smidge left. So we're going to get lined up to the pocket because we're not necessarily reviewing this bowling ball now. We're trying to see if there's an actual difference between the CG distance from the line that intersects the pin and the mass bias. So we're moving that front target to the right, to 13 board. And we're going to leave the back target the same here. That's another good thing about the Education Center is that we can do tests like this to see if there's an actual difference between um, the CG distance from the pin and the mass bias. So that was packed, good shot. Two board adjustment at the front part of the lane, keeping that target down lane the same, gave us a little strike. This is the two inch pin we're going to now, the last one was the one inch. So we want to repeat the shot see what we can do, see the performance, and have a better understanding about if the CG matters. So those are two, two really good shots. So take, the, take a look at the Specto data. You notice that the lay down point is very close. Launch angle is uh, the same. RPM to speed ratio was close, just one point off. Um, but you'll notice that the total hook uh, was slightly different. Um, so we'll continue to throw shots with these two bowling balls to see if that's actually the case, that we have a three board difference. So just with that one shot, we got three boards, but we're going to continue to look to see once we get more shots on these bowling balls, if that is actually the case. So we're going back to the Specto data. The two-inch the two, the two inch ball um, hooked three boards less, but had two feet of roll. So we're going to throw the one-inch one inch pin, excuse me, one-inch uh, CG ball again. Again, we're referring to that one-inch and two-inch being two inches from the line that intersects the pin and the mass bias uh, when you're laying out a bowling ball. 
So that was close. Definitely close. So compared to the last shot seven, just um, just at over a half board off at the lay down, um, and everything else looks pretty close. So the performance was a lot closer. That time it hooked 1.7 boards more. 1.7 boards. So you can think of that as being a little less than two inches. So we might be experiencing some surface change. So we're gonna check the surfaces. The two inch pin, excuse me, two inch CG is bouncing between 35 and 4,500. And the one inch um, CG is about 4,500, not bouncing between that 35 and 4,500 number. So slight difference, but that's okay. We're gonna continue to throw these bowling balls and see what we get. So we're gonna throw the two inch bowling ball again. Again, this has the longer CG. CG is further from the line that intersects the pin and the mass bias. Taking a look at this, looks pretty close. This is definitely, definitely stronger. So this is the shot nine was the two inch, um, two inch bowling ball that we're going to refer to it as. So shot eight, shot nine, or shot eight was the one inch. So the shots were thrown the same. This is the one inch there. The numbers are saying that we're throwing them the same. Shot six is the one inch. Shot seven is the two inch. Shot eight is the one inch. Shot nine is the two inch. And that's something to think about. If we threw 20, 30, 40 shots with these bowling balls, they would begin to look more like these where they're they're fairly close they're starting to not be so different so you notice that like that first time we did they were three boards off now they're um, about 1.7 boards off um, in total hook so we're gonna throw each one one more time see what we get out of this and if you're still here drop us a like Really appreciate it. Drop it on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Let us know what you think of this video. So 23 boards a hook there. Take a look at that specto data. So we're gonna do another one. Continue to get more shots on these bowling balls. And give our thoughts, and if we start averaging out these numbers, um, they're they're gonna be fairly close to each other. But it's good to see something like this, like a visual representation, um, because that's something that's asked about a lot: is do I need to have these one inch or two pin, two inch? Do I need to have it kick to the right to kick to the left? So it, this really helps us see if that actually does matter. So 
So that last shot was the two inch. So it's hooking slightly more than the one inch. Looks pretty universal to be 1.7 boards across the last couple shots here. And the difference between the one inch and the two inch bowling ball that the two inch is hooking some more. But that's a good thing being able to show the data live and seeing uh, the performance of these bowling balls in real time. So we're going to remove those lines, give us some fresh lines to compare these bowling balls to. And you see that box that just popped up in the lane there very shortly. We have the ability to put that out so the, the bowler can have real-time data of how they threw the shot. So we're throwing the one-inch uh, bowling ball here. That hooked a lot. Notice that hooked four boards more than the last shot we threw with the one inch uh, dynamic swing here. So now we're going to throw the two inch to see what we get out of this bowling ball here. That's right. So that doesn't count. We'll redo that one, get a better shot with that bowling ball. And this is another advantage to see in real time. We get all, all of the shots so we can actually see what this bowling ball is going to do. So again, we're throwing that two inch ball again so that was pretty close that was very very close there so now we're comparing 12 and 14 so first three specs look good and now you'll notice that t shot 12 had 27.4 boards a hook and Shot 14 had 26.6, so let's put that in perspective. So those were two good shots, less than an inch away. So this is what's good about it, is that we can show you that difference on the lane. Now when you think about one inch, that may seem like a lot when you're bowling, but take a look at what it is on the actual lane so we're going to take that target and decrease it down to one inch so we're going to take another target decrease it down to one inch and you can see how small of a difference that actually is. Get those targets lined up there. Um, you can think about it as in between those is one inch. That's just one inch of difference in total hook. So if you take those down to the break point, it's very, very small. So one inch may seem like a lot, but it, it's really, really not a considerable amount. So you can see that further down the lane, um, in terms of the difference between these two dynamic swings. So one inch difference in total hook between those two bowling balls but we can say consistently that the number two ball, the two inch, was slightly stronger. You notice that last shot, we had 0.84 boards, or excuse me, 0.8 more boards total hook uh, between 
the two inch and the one inch, which really isn't a lot at all. So putting this into perspective, see if this metric actually matters, if that will affect your performance. So one inch across the entire lane. One board is one inch. So it's a good way to think about it um, when thinking about applying um, this data that we're showing here into real life. So anyways, if you are interested in picking yourself up a dynamic swing, you can pick one up at bowlingforless.com. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Let us know what you thought of this video. Um, we appreciate all of your comments, taking the time to sit down with us for over 20 minutes. Um, it's greatly appreciated. So if you do have any questions, you can head on over to ccdbowling.com. With that being said, I am Dustin Zander with Creating the Difference, and have a great day.